above hang the much larger grey-headed and black flying foxes. Their fur is thicker and they fan themselves to keep cool and roost apart in the heat. The fruit bat's view of the world is different from ours and down on the ground they're clumsy but their role as pollinators and sowers of seed has made them successful and essential. smaller with Lonely Planet. Join an extraordinary cast of expert travelers as they explore parts of the world that you've heard or never heard of. Travel to exotic destinations and witness the culture and scenery, the sights and sounds. Get up close with the people. Take a bike trip across the desert and touch the whales in Baja. Take a journey with Lonely Planet and make insightful discoveries along the way. Lonely Planet, Thursday on Premier 12. You're watching Premier 12. Part of the Singapore Television 12 Network. In this episode of Inquiring Minds, Chris investigates how they time all the runners in a race. Persis looks at why your body temperature has to remain constant, and Mike wonders why we don't have androids yet. Twitching the game, Turin off well though, he's ahead, and there's a full start there, but Turin it is, and Fredrickson, Turin takes it! That's amazing! You know, the difference between first and last place in that race was less than two-tenths of a second. That's about the same amount of time as it takes me to snap my fingers. But here's what I'm curious about. When there's so many bodies crossing the finish line all at once, how do they get an accurate timing for all the runners? Well, racing used to be pretty simple. Athletes would just line up and race each other. And the first one to cross the finish line was the fastest. But then we invented this. The stopwatch. And it was the stopwatch that changed the face of racing. Because now it was no longer a question of just who won the race, but rather, what was their time? Here they come, Yoshioka. The, the stopwatch allowed world record times to be set and then broken in every event. But it also meant that now each racer had to be timed by an official waiting at the finish line. Now, there's one big problem with the stopwatch. It relies on people to stop and start it. But the reaction time of a human is at best a tenth of a second. So it takes at least a tenth of a second for me to decide that the runner has crossed the line and to push the button. In other words, it's not that accurate. In longer races, this inaccuracy isn't as obvious because the runners are more spread out as they cross the finish line. But in a short sprint, a few tenths of a second can make a huge difference. So for events like the Olympics, we developed more precise equipment. Equipment which relies on electronics rather than humans to make the decisions. Now, of course, the Olympics only happen every four years. But you don't have to wait that long to see some sophisticated timing equipment. In fact, this local track meet is using a timing system similar to the one that's used at the big international events. So let's see how it works. It all begins with a starter. Notice the wire hanging down from his gun. It connects the gun to the timer's bench down at the finish line. So when the gun fires, the official clock starts to run. Now, when a tenth of a second can be the difference between winning and losing, it's important that no one gets an unfair advantage, like leaving the blocks early. 
Now, here's something you'll only find at the big international track meets. These may look like regular starting blocks, but they're not. What makes them special is this little device right here. It's a sensor that monitors the pressure on the starting blocks. And if an athlete pushes off before the gun fires, then the sensor sends a signal to the starter indicating a false start. Now, there's one other interesting feature about these blocks. A horn mounted behind each runner. A horn that's also connected to the starter's pistol. But why a horn? Well, because it takes time for sound to travel, the runners in the lanes closest to the starter actually hear the sound of the gun a fraction of a second earlier than the runners in the farther lanes. So to prevent any of the racers from having an unfair advantage, a horn is placed behind the blocks, which goes off at the same time that the gun's fired. So each racer hears the start of the race at exactly the same time. Okay, so the gun goes off, we have a fair start, and the clock is running. But how do we get an accurate time for each sprinter as they cross the finish line? Well, the answer is we take a picture. Not this kind, a very special picture. Mounted high above the finish line is a high-resolution video camera. But this camera only records a very thin slice of the track, the finish line. As the racers cross the line, the camera records a picture a thousand times each second. At the end of each race, a computer quickly takes the slices and puts them together one after another. What you get is a picture of each racer as they cross the finish line. And each slice corresponds to a specific time from the start of the race. To determine each racer's time, the official moves a cursor over the body of each runner. The computer then calculates the runner's time accurate to 1 100th of a second. Once all the runners have been analyzed, the computer produces a list of the times for each lane. And that's how we get an accurate time for each athlete. You'll find the same technology at the Olympics. The only difference is that the equipment here is a little more sophisticated and a little more expensive. Now, you've probably noticed a lot of sprinters doing this when they cross the finish line. Well, there's actually a good reason for that. You see, the winner of the race is not the first person to cross the line with their hand or their foot or even their head, for that matter. It's the first torso to cross the line that wins the race. So in a real close race, a lot of sprinters will drop their head at the very end to get their torso across the line as soon as possible. And that's also how a runner's time is calculated from the point where his torso first crosses the finish line. So you done yakking? Uh, you ready to give me that race now or what, buddy? Excuse me for a second while I teach Pete here a lesson about sprinting. You're on, partner. Let's go.